in-depth, investigative. This is KXAN News Today. And our afternoons are about to be just a little bit cooler, not too much. So make sure that you get your jacket before you head out the door on this Monday. Good morning, I'm Sally Hernandez. And I'm Tom Miller, meteorologist Kristen Curry joining us. This is the week when a lot of people are doing that last minute Christmas yeah, shopping. <laughs> so so what can we expect as, as we're sort of going to be out and about this week? First half of the week, great. It's going to be the back end when the real procrastinators are rushing around. <laughs> That's when we have some rain to contend with. So let's get you out and about on this Monday morning. Hopefully you had a great weekend. Boy, that weather was perfect, right? Plenty of sunshine. Sean had a little bit of wind on Saturday, but temperatures yesterday topped out in the 70s under that bright blue sky. It felt nice, looked great today. Similar, but a little cooler. We have a very weak front pushing through, and this is going to drop our temperatures a little bit, but uh, not necessarily the best looking cold front we've had, so I wouldn't get worried about it. Clouds and radar clear. Nothing going to fall out of the sky today. In fact, we're going to see another day of bright blue conditions. Print plenty of sunshine, I should say, as that sun comes up later this morning. Lorenz and Lorenz, 360. To camera showing that clear sky. Temperatures definitely cold in the 30s and 40s. Not quite as cold as yesterday morning, but still wanting a jacket with 39 in Bastrop, 47 Austin, down close to freezing in Lano at 34 at the moment, 38 in Fredericksburg. Looking forward, all that sunshine we anticipate today helping to warm our temperatures back into the upper 60s. That's actually a little bit warmer than where we should be for the middle to end of December. And you can leave the rain gear at home. It's not going to happen for us today. However, However, don't completely put it away for the week because we've got a good looking storm that's going to bring some rain chances to us starting Thursday. More likely to see this this upcoming holiday weekend. So a lot to discuss when it comes to when, where, how much, what we need to plan for. If we've got friends and family coming into town for Christmas, more details on what we're looking at in your first winning forecast. Thank you, Kristen. One person is dead and three bystanders are recovering after an officer involved shooting on 6th Street over the weekend. And KXAN has the surveillance video showing what happened. KXAN Sarah Elshay breaks down that footage and shares how people nearby reacted to that shooting. I've never been as afraid. This bartender, who wishes to remain anonymous, says they were working when shots rang out on East 6th Street Saturday before midnight. And everyone started running, bum rushing the bar. I've never hit the floor like that before. The Austin Police Department says a man tried to enter a bar with a gun. A bar employee warned police. This video given to us from a nearby bar owner shows the moments officers approached what appears to be the suspect. As officers approached the suspect, the suspect pulled out a firearm and pointed it in the direction of officers and innocent bystanders. The video shows officers drawing their guns, people running, and though we've blurred it here, the person falling to the ground. The suspect sustained multiple gunshot wounds and was later pronounced deceased. A few moments later, the video shows DPS troopers approach another person off to the side. At another part of the video, blood is seen on the ground where the person was. Three bystanders were injured, one in critical condition, according to APD. No officers were injured. You never know when somebody's gonna pull out a gun. It was a very chaotic scene for nearby bouncer Muhammad Abdullah. Then we had a flood of people come in. We got them in, closed the doors and the windows ASAP. Some people wanted to leave, we let them out from the back door. Abdullah says this is a reminder for why he takes his job seriously, checking people as they enter the bar. We're always on alert. We also have to be sure sometimes that people that are coming into the bar have a gun or not. Sarah al Sheh, KXAN News. Police body cameras also capture that shooting, and Chief Henderson says this will be made public within 10 business days. Because of the holidays, that could be as late as January 2nd, though. Police did not name the bar where this incident happened. And looking in depth, the city actually launched a safety initiative after a previous deadly shooting that happened on 6th Street. In June of 2021, KXAN covered a mass shooting that killed one person and wounded 14 others. Afterwards, the city launched the Safer 6th Street initiative. And since then, the city's installed additional surveillance cameras in the entertainment district created a critical incident training program for bars and established a staging area to help the response time for first responders. The city, city is still exploring ways to make changes, though, to improve safety for the people who visit 6th Street. This morning, we could find whether a central Texas man who was guilty on manslaughter charges will serve part of his sentence on probation. 
Terry Turner shot and killed Adil Dehugi two years ago in Martindale. Jury weighed in last month, sentencing him to 10 years in prison. But today that judge is going to decide whether part of that will be served as probation. Also this morning, negotiations continue on Capitol Hill over security at the U.S.-Mexico border. The Homeland Security Secretary met with a group of Democrat and Republican negotiators trying to hammer out that deal that they hope can eventually get to the Senate floor for a vote. Yeah, Senate dealmakers say progress is being made, but there are still significant sticking points on some of those most controversial provisions. Sources say there are three main areas where the two sides are still too far apart. Uh, parole authority, detention of migrants, and the proposed expansion of expedited removal of migrants nationwide. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell has indicated there will likely not be a vote this week. Capital Metro is going to discuss making it easier for homeless people to get around the city. It's holding a public hearing and a board meeting today to talk about adopting amendments to the pass fair. The resolution says it will provide a no-cost, two-year transit pass for eligible customers who are homeless or struggling to find housing. The passes can be used on Capital Metro local and rapid buses, pick up by Capital Metro and Cap Metro access services. A look at that massive storm system battering the East Coast as millions of Americans are waking up this morning to severe weather. First hit by a car, then a hit from insurance. The message an Austin cyclist has for others and how that could help you. Good morning, this is a live look outside. Looking over Austin, up from the hills in the Westlake area. Happy to have you here with us on this Monday morning. Millions of Americans are waking up this morning to severe weather, a massive storm system that battered parts of the south over the weekend, now drenching the east coast with pouring rain and some damaging winds. NBC News' George Solis reports ahead of the Today Show this morning. Good morning. It's looking like a messy commute for millions today, especially those trying to get a jump start on their holiday travel all the way from Maine to Georgia as this storm system barrels up the east coast. It's the same system that dumped so much rain on the Carolinas over the weekend. We're talking flooded roads and even some power outages. We heard from some residents who said it was the worst flooding they have seen in years. We're also talking about that storm system that wreaked havoc on Florida over the weekend. Also flooding out streets, the turnpike and those winds up to 65 miles an hour also taking out power lines. Today, the major concern, of course, travel for those either driving on the roadways or heading to the airport, something we'll be keeping a close watch on. We'll have full team coverage coming up on today. Still ahead with Texas Attorney General Ken Paxson's former top aides are trying to get him to do as that previously settled whistleblower lawsuit is back on. The journey of a package during the holiday season. What happens after you click the buy button? Texas volleyball team playing for a national title, and it wasn't close on Sunday. I've got it for you, plus reaction coming up. Good morning. Happy Monday. A live look outside from CODA, Circuit of the Americas. Some stars in the sky there. We kick off another week. There are some questions over whether Ken Paxton wrongfully terminated his former top employees. Those are going to be addressed back in court this week. Yeah, the whistleblower lawsuit first filed in 2020 was settled at the beginning of this year, but the $3.3 million payout that Patston asked for prompted the House to start investigating him, and lawmakers never approved the settlement funds. In this Wednesday's hearing, the Attorney General's former top aides, they want a deposition, and they're asking the judge to compel Paxton to testify under oath. Paxton's never done that in any of those ongoing legal cases against him. General Paxton's story as to why he fired these employees is the critical question that's going to happen at trial. And what's interesting and different from the impeachment case and the securities fraud case is if Ken Paxton asserts his Fifth Amendment rights in a deposition in a civil case, the plaintiff's lawyers get to argue to the jury that the reason he didn't answer the question was because he knew the answer was going to be bad for him. You can't do that in a criminal trial. We reach out to Paxton's team, didn't hear back though. This lawsuit is separate from Paxton's ongoing securities fraud case. That's when he was indicted in 2015 for allegedly defrauding investors with that trial set to begin next April. 
A new wishbone shaped bridge is in the works for Austin. Capital Delivery Service is advertising for bids on potential contractors to build this pedestrian and bicycle bridge over Lady Bird Lake and parallel the Longhorn Dam. The wishbone shape will allow it to connect to the existing Butler Hike and Bike Trail at three points, Longhorn Shores, Holly Shores, and under the peninsula, Holly Shores. Uh, also, Capital Delivery Services tells us this idea came from the public. The idea of the wishbone structure actually came from our one of our public meetings and was a submission by the public. Um, and so we took that and then we, we incorporated it with our alternatives and solicited more public feedback. And I think that the wishbone structure um, outweighed the, the second most popular by about double. So it was it was a very popular choice. Estimated an overall project budget of $25 million to go along with it. And they're shooting for a completion date of late 2026. Yeah. Looks beautiful on the renderings. It does. It's too. You know what's <laughs> interesting about this to me too is you hear like, hey, there's going to be a public meeting. They're going to take some feedback. And I always just sort of assume, and maybe this is the pessimist in me, that like, they already know what they want to do. Like, they don't really want to hear the feedback. But here, it's quite clear yeah, that it worked. That it worked. Imagine being the guy who proposed it. Exactly. Like, this whole that. thing was my idea. You could name yeah. it after him exactly. or her. Yeah, exactly. Let me show you what's going on with your forecast this morning. Nice and quiet. It is chilly out there. But uh, obviously, it's December, and it should be cold in the morning. So grab the jacket, leave the umbrella and home. Currently sitting at 47 degrees. That 47 degrees is actually pretty close to normal. We should be around 43. 344 uh, this time of year. But the west northwest winds, those are at about eight miles per hour at the moment. Winds today generally out of the north at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So you'll notice the air moving around a little bit. It's not an out of control wind, but enough air moving that will go with winds noticeable. Temperatures in the 40s to start, 60s to finish. This afternoon looks fantastic. Plenty of sunshine. That 67 is warmer than normal. Low humidity, dry skies. We look good and we feel good. Same kind day tomorrow. A little more cloud cover. We'll go mostly cloudy skies midweek here. Temperatures are still going to stay comfortable in the upper 60s to low 70s and then we get ready for our next storm system. Let's preview this because rain chances will start low on Thursday but they'll be with us Friday and again on Saturday. You can see this isn't even just central Texas. This is across the state. We've got a good chance of rain. And then even Sunday into Monday, it's looking like cold front coming through here late in the day. Sunday, maybe even on Monday. Uh, that is going to keep the rain chances alive for the holiday. So starting to talk wet weather this Thursday all the way through Christmas. How much? Well, we still have some sorting out to do. Here's what I mean. This computer model is showing anywhere from about a three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half of rainfall uh, between Thursday and Sunday. But the other computer model is only showing about half an inch of rain. So we're watching it closely. I don't want to uh, pin it down just yet. We've got plenty of time to watch it, but I wanted to give you a heads up because yes, we're probably doing some last minute shopping, last minute errands before family and company arrive here for the holiday. So today would be a fantastic day to do it. Not too bad Tuesday, Wednesday either. We're just going to lose a little bit of sunshine as those clouds thicken up. Temperatures stay mild not only in the afternoon, but we're actually getting a touch warmer overnight, relatively speaking, still on the cooler side. But then there's the rain chances looking heaviest right now Friday, but that's still a decent chance of rain all the way through Christmas Eve. Temperatures will be in the low 70s this weekend. Overnight lows, not bad, upper 50s this weekend as well. A one-two punch, first hit by a car, then hit from an insurance company. An Austin cyclist says he has a message now for others. He says it took him weeks to sort this all out with the driver's insurance after he filed a claim. And KXA investigator Arzo Dos explains how he proved his case and how this could be helpful for other cyclists. Michael Passman says he rides more than 100 miles a week. That's my only form of transportation. But since mid-October, he's been without his bike. I was going westbound on St. John's into Midtown Commons uh, on a bicycle, and I was stopped at the, um, at the intersection where the sidewalk and bike lane is. 
and the light turned green and I proceeded across the crosswalk in the bike lane where the green triangles and chevrons are and a car came from my, my left and turned into me. Passman's front and rear camera captured the crash. He says his bike was damaged. He filed a claim with the driver's insurance, sharing his videos, explaining the markings on the road and pointing out the sign which reads, turning traffic must yield to pedestrians. But he says the insurance company denied his claim. The adjuster originally said that I was at fault because I wasn't in the roadway. So he appealed. Probably two tenths of a mile back, the bike lane is in the roadway and then it merges onto the sidewalk and the bike lane is actually marked on the sidewalk. So that's the shared use path. The city of Austin says it uses the combination of the crosswalk with green back chevrons when bicycles and pedestrians share the same path. The green back chevron shows a person on a bike or a scooter the preferred path of travel and indicates to people driving they can expect to see people bicycling and riding scooters. The city says two other locations have this type of marking, one south on Barton Springs Road near the Palmer Event Center and the other on Escarpment Boulevard in the Circle C area. After the appeal and about a month later, the insurance company approved the claim. In an email, the driver's insurance farmers told KXAN, after a thorough review of the facts of this incident, we have paid for property damage arising from the accident involving our customer. The Texas Department of Insurance says the state insurance code requires insurance companies to attempt in good faith to make prompt, fair and equitable claim settlements. The front end was destroyed um, and it's a carbon frame. Passman says the lesson for all cyclists, be your own advocate. They settled the damage claim obviously for less than I wanted and I am in the process of replacing it. Arzo Dost, KXAN investigates. Passman adds that he also filed an insurance claim with the insurance company and he's been checked out by a doctor, recently had an MRI, now waiting to hear back on that. The Insurance Information Institute says that bicycles are covered under, under standard homeowners and renters insurance policies as personal property. Those policies also provide liability protection for harm you may cause to someone else or their property. Texas Department of Insurance adds that some insurance companies offer policies specifically for bicycles. The agency says if you think that you're not being treated fairly, you should file a complaint. Austin police did get called out to the crash and say the driver was not cited, but Passman is pushing forward an investigation. He wants APD to look at a state law passed back in 2021, which could include penalties for a driver who causes bodily injury to a pedestrian or cyclist. The law says drivers could face charges from a class A misdemeanor to state jail felony. Now the story started with a tip. If you have something that you want us to investigate, let us know. Send it to us at report it at kxan.com. This is KXAN Sports, brought to you by Thomas J. Henry. Good morning to you. All is good for the Longhorns when that tower is burning orange with a number one on it. Another national championship for Texas. Longhorn volleyball team in Tampa on Sunday. Sergio Garcia, the adopted Longhorn. Jermaine O'Neal, NBA superstar and Longhorn dad and Dominica Sue there for the Nebraska side. And He's still mad about that 2009 Big 12 championship game. First set, Longhorns do it with the serve. That's Brian Skinner, Madison Skinner's dad. He's a former NBA player. Yeah, you start connecting the dots with these kids and their height and their pedigree. There's another service ace. Longhorns win the first set easily, or rather a little tight, and then they just start to pour it on, and it's primarily with the serve. Asia O'Neal just dominated. She rolled off four straight. There it is. You see that score. In the second set, that shot is out. Longhorns win by 11 in the second set. They faced a match point in the third round to Tennessee, and from there, they have defeated not one, not two, but three number one seeds, including the number one overall seed, Nebraska, and they did it in dominating fashion. Madison Skinner, the final four MVP, and, well, there it is, match point. Texas, back-to-back -back national championships. 
Longhorns lost three non-conference games once in the Big 12 and then roared through the tournament for the national title. There's so much pride in, you know, the expectations that Texas are to win championships, and we did that today, and we did it with our backs against the wall all season long, and um, this is what sports are about. This is what's it's so joyful. We knew that because we had a rocky start, like we were the underdogs, and there was no pressure on us. Pressure was on every other team that we were playing because we were the lower seeded team. So there wasn't the pressure of last year where, oh my gosh, we have to do X, Y, and Z because we're number one. We were just able to play free, and we love each other, and we support one another. And throughout the whole year, it was just so fun. And this is probably the most joyous season I've ever had in my life. It was definitely challenging at times, but. Just today was an example. Like everyone played free, everyone had confidence in one another, and we were able to go out and take down some really incredible teams. I was so emotional on the court. I've never been so emotional ever in my life. Um, but just to have this season that we had and it being so rocky, but coming out on top and um, just the confidence that we all had together was just something that I've never been a part of. So um, it's great just to battle back and be the underdog and have people expect you not to do great, and then you just just to prove them wrong. It's awesome. Yeah, Skinner expected back where the Longhorns will go for that three-peat next year. Cowboys lose on Sunday big at Buffalo. Now they are Seattle fans, Seahawks, and Eagles tonight. If the Eagles lose, Cowboys remain tied in the NFC East. Back to you. Thank you for listening on the KXAN Today podcast. Here's what we're looking at for you and tracking in the 5 a.m. hour of KXAN Today. How an afternoon at Barton Creek Mall turned into a rush of crowds of Christmas shoppers, and it's not because of why you would think.